Hi, uh, my name is Bradley Gillow. I am a young filmmaker from Australia and I'm currently directing a film called To Catch a Bunyip. When I was like a kid, I, I always remember seeing like a camera because my dad used to videotape like, like all my, um, my baby videos. I don't know, it was something that I always thought was interesting. You know the, the phrase that like a picture paints a thousand words? I like to imagine that film does that a thousand times more than um, photography. Yeah, that kind of sparked an interest for film for me. By the time when I was six, I was just watching movies like constantly. And um, the films that I would watch the most are adventure films. So To Catch a Bunyip is basically a film about this young girl, Emma, who goes to the billabong every day because she believes that the bunyip uh, lives there and she wants to capture it for its magic because she believes that bunyips have the power to regenerate life. She uh, wants to get the magic because she wants to help her sick mum, uh, Jess, who suffers from Parkinson's disease. Her older sister, Abby, clashes with Emma because she doesn't believe in bunyips. And what Emma is saying is all nonsense. So she wants to have Emma show more responsibility. What made you want to tell this story? This, um, this film that I'm making is uh, a personal story that I wanted to convey for about three years now because um, my mom uh, had Parkinson's disease and um, it had like a significant impact to the way that I was growing up as a kid. When I graduated of, out of high school, my mom passed away from her 12-year uh, battle with Parkinson's disease. And for about two years, I was depressed because I wasn't really sure where my life was going after that. So I wanted to make this story to convey, to convey my feelings on that experience as well as um, sort of an outlet for me to get over those feelings and also move on. The reason why I incorporated bunyips, uh, I, there was a film that I watched when I was a kid called uh, Dot and the Kangaroo. That was a film that I used to watch with my mom. And um, I wanted to turn this bad situation into something more lighthearted. So I merely thought of that film. And that, that film happens to feature like, like a bunyip. So um, I wanted to draw inspiration from that memory in particular and make a, a film where it comes from a very bad place into a more lighthearted and fun adventure film. The story is much so not about the bunyip, but rather the family. But yet the bunyip is all a part of this and is the link to the family. You don't see the bunyip per se, but I've written it in a way that it's left for interpretation whether the bunyip exists or not. And it's something for the audience, for themselves to decide on. Uh, this is the first film I'm directing. Uh, well, first short film that I'm directing. I've done directing in the past where I was not 100% sure what I want or what I'm going for. But with this, I have like this queer idea in terms of every small detail from production design, cast, locations. I feel pretty confident as a director to uh, do, do my job uh, well. I've spent so much time just thinking to myself all the small details of how, a, how the scenes are going to play out, how the shots are going to look, how everything, how the performances are going to play out during the scene. And there are, I mean, obviously there are going to be issues that are going to pop up while filming, but I, I think I have enough 
preparation to be ready for the shoot. And because of that, I think that, um, I think this will turn out to be really good. Okay guys, we've got two minutes to <laughs> In terms of the production of this film so far, it's been pretty challenging to say at the least because um, I wanted to have this film set in the 1970s. Problem with that is that there's not a lot of locations that are still in the 19, still in that era. So I was very worked up about finding the right location that worked. I feel like I'm finding, I'm getting, I'm finding places that are perfect. It's just that it's taking a lot of time to find the right place that fits within the film. That would also have like the right, you know, paint uh, textures. And um, I think it's, it's worth the wait of finding the, the right location rather than just shooting over like a mate's place. Because it shows that there's a lot of uh, attention to detail. During the course of uh, production, it felt like I was reliving those moments when my mom passed away because the way that I wrote it was such a vivid part of that experience. And it was during those memories where I felt alone. During the course of uh, writing, uh, developing the story, finding locations, casting. It felt like I was very much in the moment of that uh, pivotal day. And uh, when, I was, when I pitched the film, that same night my, my nan passed away, who is uh, my mom's mom. And it felt like, yeah, I was reliving pretty much those days. But it, it's good in a way because um, I believe with, with that, I think I'll be able to direct my head of departments and my actors to bring them with me in uh, those days. I'm definitely sorting things through and um, I have a really strong team behind me who uh, makes this film their own as well. It definitely helps me knowing that, that they're there for, to support me as well. As I said before, uh, this story is about family rather than the adventure that the protagonist is having. So for me, it was important to find uh, people that looked relatively the same. Uh, the youngest girl, Ava, is uh, brilliant. Ava was the, um, the second girl we auditioned for the protagonist role of uh, Emma. I immediately told the producers that she was, she was the one. And we pretty much casted her straight after that. One of the characters in my film, Jess, I wrote her to intentionally have Parkinson's disease. And this character is very important to me because uh, she is based on my own mom, and I wanted to get uh, my feelings off my chest into this one character that means a lot for this story and for myself. I wanted to find someone who was really good at um, like body performances, and someone who didn't, who is willing to study how Parkinson's affects uh, you mentally as well as physically. And we came across Mel and she was very genuine and I felt like that she was perfect. The rest of the cast was great as well to help sell the idea that everyone is a family. And I believe that they're, they're perfect. I believe they're perfect. This, um, this film is uh, sort of independently raised at the moment out of uh, my mother's inheritance because I believe that I um, might as well use what she gave me to help make this, um, a to, make the, to help make her film. The end goal with this film, like I said before, I kind of want this to be a film that's viewed as like a quintessential film for Parkinson's disease, where uh, the patients can watch and something that they can relate to, yeah. I think the most important thing about this film, it always starts with the story because that's 
pretty much the blueprint of any film. And if you don't have a good blueprint, then you don't have a good film. I made sure to make this, um, the script as tight and as vivid as possible. So when someone reads it, they get a good sense on how everything is gonna play out. And I, I made sure that like, I leave room for actors' interpretations so that they can have, they can get into their roles more and it doesn't have to be the same dialogue from the script, but something that comes from, from themselves personally. I feel like I'm not in a position to give anyone advice because I'm still learning, but um, make films that you personally want to make. I don't think personally you have to uh, experience something to make a good film. If you're willing to put in time and effort into research to a particular idea, then I think if you believe in that film, then it could be possible to make it happen and make it a really good film. That's one more question. Yeah, sure. Are Bunyip's real? Um, I like to think so, but um, I haven't seen one. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. <laughs>